Hi and welcome to another Tech Minds video. As you can see, we're outside today. Well, that's because there's a bit of a break in the weather here and I wanted to test this antenna for quite some time now. Now I've seen a few other people test this antenna, but I wanted to try it out for myself as it's been sat in the cupboard probably for three or four months now. So we're gonna give it a try and see if we can make some contacts. Now apparently it's supposed to work from 40 meters up to 10 meters and also VHF and UHF along with airband. Although I don't really think that VHF and UHF will work particularly well, so I'm not even gonna bother trying it. But of course I will try from 40 meters upwards. But before we get into testing the antenna, let me show you what you get in the box. So first up, we get this little accessory bag which contains a couple of useful adapters, one of which is a right angle connector, which we'll use later to attach this little box. And this has a BNC socket on one end and a BNC plug on the other end. Now later in the video, I'll show you what's inside of these boxes. But as far as I can tell, this is a common node choke of sorts, which should eliminate RF on the coax. Now more about that later. We then have five meters of BNC terminated coax cable, which is used to go between the antenna and your radio. However, when I went to use this cable, one of the BNC plugs broke. So you'll see me using a different coax cable in the video. We then have the main loop tuning box, which consists of two rotary dials and a switch. Now either side of the tuning box, there's an SO239 connector, which is where we attach the included loop. On the right side of that box, there's also a BNC socket. Now this is where we connect that common node choke or I guess you can connect direct to your radio if you don't want to use the choke. On the bottom, we find a quite useful quarter inch mounting point, which is extremely useful for attaching the tuning box to something like a tripod. Now the tripod that you'll probably see in this video did not come with the antenna. It was just a cheap purchase from Amazon. But the reason why I got it was because it actually goes quite tall, lifting that loop quite far off the ground. Now then we have the main loop cable, which is in fact made from some major thick coax. Not entirely sure what type of coax it is, but it's definitely quite thick and definitely quite rigid. Now I guess this is used more for rigidness than power handling because this antenna can only handle a maximum of 20 watts on SSB and 10 watts on the digital modes like FT8, for example. So if we head back outside, we can take a closer look at how I've mounted the antenna. You can see the choke box attached to the tuning box using one of the supplied angled BNC adapters there on the right hand side. And then the tuning box is attached to the tripod mount. Now when it comes to tuning, I refer to this chart, which provides a good starting point. Now tuning this antenna is so much easier if you have something like a nano VNA. Now the reason for this is because each small increment of any of those dials makes quite a big difference. So having something like a nano VNA running on a continuous sweep means you can keep an eye on that resonant dip at all times. Now first make sure the switch is in the correct position for the band you wish to use. For 40 meters, the switch should be down and then from 20 meters upwards, the switch should be in the up position. Set your nano VNA to continuously scan the band you want to use, then adjust the top dial until you see the dip over the center of the band. Then adjust the bottom dial to further bring the dip down. You may have to readjust the top dial to realign the frequency and then the bottom dial again. In fact, if you've ever used a manual antenna tuner, then it feels extremely similar to that. Now just be careful as some bands have a narrower bandwidth than others, so at band edges, you may have to retune the antenna. Now with the antenna tuned to the 17 meter band at 18 megahertz, let's take a quick listen to see how well it receives. Um, my name's Santa, Sierra Alpha, Nancy, Tango, Oscar. Germany 4, Zulu, Charlie, Whiskey. India, Kido 4, Union, Papa, India. Yeah, 
but if we worked before, there is some quite big difference right now. We have absolutely excellent weather, the sun is shining and everything except for one thing. Uh, the temperature is, uh, during the night time, is of minus 30 and we have one meter with snow, so it's absolutely wonderful. Now, to me, that's actually quite impressive for such a small loop. I did try to call in a few times to different stations but I don't think my 10 watts was cutting it against those stronger stations. Now let's just retune the antenna for 40 meters and take a listen. Mike Zero, Delta, Quebec Whiskey. Delta Lima 2, Papa Zulu, hello there, you're 5 and 7. Now again, I wasn't able to make any contacts on 40, but reception was definitely working well. So finally, let's try 20 meters at 14 megahertz. And this time, I managed a QSO. Mike Zero, Whiskey, Delta, Quebec. Uh, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Okay, so that was the wrong order of the suffix. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey, Oscar Sulate, Charlie Tango Hotel. Very good afternoon, Matthew. Thank you for coming back to the mic call. I don't see we worked before, so pleasure to work with you for the first time this afternoon. In the next over, I'll give you a report. My name is Peter, Pabeco. Tenko Echo Rubio, QT, a small town in central Denmark. Yeah, very good afternoon, Peter. Thank you very much for uh, letting me come in there. Um, yes, so I, I'm just uh, just testing a, an antenna this afternoon and uh, just running 10 watts at the moment. Only running 10 watts from an ICOM 705. So. Mike Thoreau, Delta Quebec Whiskey, 078CG3, sitting fine on your low power, Matthew. So take your power into, into consideration, you did a fine job. You are 5 and 3, 5 and 4, 5 and 3, 5 and 4 in the peak. Sometimes the capability down to 4, but mainly Q5. Now for those interested in the battery that I was using, it was this one. Now it's a little smaller than a car battery, but it still weighs quite a bit. So not great if you want to take it up a mountain, but great for portable days if you're parked close by. Or well, for me, it's a power source while well, in the garden. Now, as mentioned earlier, I said I would show you inside each of the boxes. So here's the first one, which I believe is some form of choke. It appears to be two copper wires, one of which looks enameled, wrapped around a ferrite core, and then terminated on the inside of the BNC sockets within the box. Now, inside the tuning box, we can see a couple of variable capacitors, which are used for the tuning alongside the switch. Now those capacitors look extremely basic to me, which is probably why 20 watts is the max rating for this antenna, although I'm not sure how long that would last. To be honest, I don't know enough about variable capacitors when used in transmitting antennas, so maybe they will be okay, but who knows. Anyway guys, if you've got one of these antennas or have any suggestions to improve it, or if you think it's a complete load of tosh, then let me know down in the comments below. Be interesting to know your thoughts on this. Until the next video, take care, stay safe. I'll see you guys in the next video.